Does your phone give you anxiety? Very important topic and one that I am guilty of myself and it's always a goal each and every year to use the phone less. Uh, it's not always easy, but I think we all need to do our best to weed ourselves off the phone and have more time for other things that are just better in our life all around. So let's take a look at a couple of articles here. One, again, from Healthline. Does your phone give you anxiety? Seven steps to cope. So as much as I want to deny it, it, the truth is I'm totally dependent on my phone. From Googling trivia and looking up directions to reading the news and texting my partner to ask for what's for dinner, I have my phone in my hands constantly. It's one, it's the one tool I rely on all day to help me with a range of useful and sometimes not useful tests. That sounds like me. A few months ago, I began to notice an empty feeling whenever I finished another fruitless scroll through my social media feeds. I lost a couple of hours with nothing to show for it. And the deadlines for the work I was supposed to be doing loomed ever closer. Oh my goodness. All right, so what is phone anxiety? Modern technology has revolutionized the way we engage and interact with one another. Never have we been able to be so connected to share the moments of our lives, not just our close loved ones, but anyone on the planet. With, As with anything that's exciting, there are often downsides. Numerous psychologists have reported the damaging effects of obsessive mobile phone use on the mental well-being of young people. Please comment below if you have kids, especially do you, you let your kids use the phone? Uh, and if they do, what do they use it for? Are they allowed to use it all day, socialize, or for other things? Please comment below and let us know if it's a good thing that kids very young use the phone. Okay, let's continue. This includes a variety of studies reporting on the increase in insomnia, depression, low self-esteem, and even suicidal thoughts linked to excessive mobile phone use. But it's not just young people who fall victim to these feelings. To learn more, I spoke with Shelby Thomas. So you can read about Shelby's story there. So number one, they say, take a clean break. Something that's helped me get a better handle um, on phone anxiety is to step away from my phone entirely. Whether it was just one day of the whole week without my phone, removing my attachment to my device and help me provide a clear picture of how it disrupts my emotional well-being. I think that is a big point. Find a time during the day we sometimes just can't get away from using our phone and just make that opportunity your time for yourself with nothing else going on, cook, uh, walk in the park, but something that does involve your phone. I would highly encourage that. Or what do you think? What is better? What time of day is better for you not having your phone on you and constantly, you know, drawing your attention? Please comment below. Um, number two, they say, do a digital cleanup. When, the, when was the last time you did a cleanup of all the apps and extras you have on your phone? I'm willing to bet there's a few on there you don't really need. Reducing my digital clutter helped me create an inter interface on my phone that helps and feels clean. That reduces distraction and time spent finding apps plus makes using my phone more streamlined. Very good point. Number three, create boundaries. Creating some digital boundaries has helped me ease my addiction to my phone and reduce the associated anxiety. Very good idea. Number four, prioritize. How do you keep wishing you had more time for? Or, sorry, what do you wish you, what do you keep wishing you had more time for? <laughs> burp, 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 burp. Sorry about that. At the start of each week, I reflect on this question and make a list in my notebook. When I feel the itch to pick up my phone for a distraction, I choose an item from my list instead. That's pretty interesting. Never heard that before. Let's go to number five, engage purposefully. There are many apps and accounts that promote mental health development and can help you manage your symptoms, says Shelby. Instead of mindless scrolling, 
or time-sucking apps. Finding the ones that help you combat your anxiety rather than add to it. That's really good. They mentioned Headspace and Calm. I use Calm personally for breathing exercises. So number six, make a happy space. A happy, happy, happy space. For many of us, turning to our phones as a distraction is now an ingrained habit that can be hard to break. What's been helpful for me in combating phone anxiety is creating a space on my phone that helps me to feel good rather than anxious. There you go. And number seven, unfollow liberally. In certain accounts, websites, or people only make you feel worse about yourself. You don't have to engage with them. Be mindful of what you are consuming. I think that is an excellent point. Be mindful of what you're doing, not just with the phone itself, but all throughout the day. Make conscious decisions. Take time to reflect. Understand what's in front of you, why you're doing what you're doing. And if you don't like it, step back, reflect, breathe, re-engage. Make that a daily practice. So you can read the rest of that article from Elaine Mead, I think that's her name, from the Healthline article. And just really quick, as it relates to um, another article I saw from the PiedmontHealthCare.org, Piedmont.org, seven reasons to break your smartphone addiction. One of them is you'll become less anxious and stressed. You'll have more clarity. You will have deeper connections with others. I think that's true. I, you know, I always reference this uh, idea of living in the 90s, the last greatest generation of uh, time to live. (laughs) That's my own personal prerogative. But I just think, you know, that time was so great. Um, We weren't so, growing up during that time, so immersed heavily into technologies. I was always out. In the neighborhood with friends, goofing around, getting in trouble, and we weren't—we're were never on our phone. That was only a phenomena, um, really, only some years ago when it just really took off. But it makes me remember those times. Uh, they also s- mentioned sharper critical thinking, creativity, more mindfulness, more gratitude, and a healthier body. So you can read that article in more detail. That's from the Piedmont Healthcare uh, Group Institute. I'm not sure exactly what they are, but I just wanted to highlight that because it hits some main points. But in the end of the day, really, I'm guilty of this well. I think most people are, but we just have to find the right way in which to use our phones really as a tool, as a way of helping us um, It's used, you know, obviously for entertainment, but don't let it be all of your entertainment if it makes sense. Use it as much as you need, really just as a tool rather than being overly dependent, only as much as you need. I'm trying to find the best ways to do that myself. Um, So, you know, we're all in this together. (laughs) So comment below. Do you have certain ways or practices in which you try to use less of your phone and not be so close to it and overly dependent. I, w- I would love to know. Please comment below and share with others, and that would be great. And you can check out those two articles in more detail. Take care, everyone.